Good morning, and welcome to worship on this Wednesday of Holy Week. I pray that these services that we've been hosting each morning have been a blessing to you as we continue through this holiest week of the Christian year. As has been the case each morning so far, you can download the text of today's service at our website, stpaulsfallcity.org, or visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash fcstpauls. Before we continue with this morning's service, I invite you to take a moment to prepare your heart and your mind for worship. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, suffered at human hands and endured the shame of the cross. Grant that we may walk in the way of his cross and find it the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. 
Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out. And it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. This is an interesting reaction by the disciples. In most of the other gospel accounts, when Jesus talks about his betrayal, they immediately deny any possibility that it could be one of them. Even Judas is described as having denied even entertaining the thought of betraying Jesus, even though most of the gospel writers set us up to understand that Judas is the one who will hand Jesus over from the very beginning. So why the uncertainty? How is it that the disciples could have the reaction of not knowing whether or not one of them would end up betraying Jesus? On the one hand, it could be evidence, as I pointed out last year when reflecting on this text, that the disciples were not all that bright, at least when it came to the events surrounding the end of Jesus' life. But there's another way to read this reaction that I think may be more helpful for us as we ponder it this Holy Week. And that way of looking at this text, this uncertainty, is this. It reflects perhaps a certain humility or an honesty about, one of, about what the disciples were capable of doing. If we read the disciples' uncertainty about this as genuine, then it opens up the possibility that any one of them could have conceived of their being the one who would betray Jesus. And that level of honesty is perhaps something that we should embrace, not just during Holy Week, but throughout all of our lives. We have a tendency to want to think the best of ourselves, our own attitudes and thoughts and motivations. And we want other people to see those things in the best light as well. And there's nothing wrong with that in particular. But what if we lived our life with this sort of honesty or openness to the ambiguity of our lives? What if we understood that it was possible for our actions, even if we don't intend them to do so, to betray our ideals, to betray our relationship with our Savior? I think if we lived with that sort of openness, we would be far less likely to point the finger at others, to ascribe to them ill intention when their actions go astray. And that's not to say that there shouldn't be accountability when things do go wrong and when people act in ways that require some consequence. But if we read this text and we recognize in ourselves the possibility that even our best intended acts and thoughts and words and deeds might go astray. I think we can have that same level of openness and curiosity to others as we interact with them.
and perhaps live with a little less of the judgmentalism that so many people see in the church and in our society at large. Let us all be uncertain about whom Jesus is speaking, even as we know with certainty that when Jesus speaks words of peace and grace and love and life to us, that they are most certainly true for you and for me and for our world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Into your hands, almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life.